don't need it. You might as well come in it. Hey, mate. Hello and welcome to this special Christmas edition of uh, Brian Clark in the Attic Studio. This is Bazaar Border Terrier. He's a lovable little thing, aren't he? He doesn't mind the music at all. He's been doing it since he's a puppy, haven't you? So he don't mind the music at all. He don't mind the playing. So in this uh, in this vid, I'm going to talk about uh, simple, affordable Christmas gifts. Uh, Christmas gifts. Um, I'm not going to go any. I'm not going to go expensive or ridiculous. Um, it's just going to be stocking filler stuff. So I'll put them up down. Oh, oh he's getting heavy on this dog. There you go, Paul. So yeah, I've got a few bits and bobs here scattered around. Not very tidily, I might add. So yeah, these are the sort of things that I think, you know, last minute sort of presents that won't break the bank. I'm not gone stupid as I say. So first up, you can't go wrong with strings, electric guitar strings. Um, I'm afraid these are the disposable thing on guitarists, they wear out and you just have to have more. So guitar players always want more. We always need uh, a ready supply of the strings. So yeah, find out what gauge. If you're buying for somebody else, I'm assuming here we're buying for, if you're watching this, you're going to be buying for somebody else. Um, if you're buying for somebody else, just make sure you know that if they prefer a certain manufacturer or gauge, a string um, find out what that is these are the only ball regular slinkies I'm not shilling but that's those are the ones I use you can get these in packets of three um, with obviously which is cheaper than just buying three single packets and if you go online and search about I have seen like you know you can get them in like units of six quite reasonably priced so a good present no problem your guitar playing friend or lover will love you for those um let's keep it simple still i've broken into this packet but this is plectrums again are disposable for guitar players um we all need plectrums i've just shown this packet really this is this is one of the plectrums out of this but these are the ones i use the jazz three nylon xls but uh, there's all sorts of different sizes if you don't know and different uh, Sort of gauges and thicknesses but um i have seen packets again if you go online search about i've seen like packets where you they've got all different sizes and gauges in the one packet so a player can try out and find your likes a, a different pick to the one he's using now is by uh, experimenting or again find out which ones they use and maybe buy them a couple of packets because you always need your plectrums so moving on quickly, I think this is an indispensable, indispensable uh, product. It's a clip-on tuner. Again, I'm going to assume not everybody knows what a clip-on tuner is. So you basically clip it on there. It's got a little switch, and it'll tell you when you pluck a string. That's the the high E. Telling me it's in tune. Blah de blah blah de blah. Um, just use a simple little uh, like a hearing aid type battery and they last ages. This is uh, the Snark one, which is I think one of the original, if not the original, headstock tuner brand. It's just the simple red one. Again, you go online, these are not expensive by any means. In fact, this was cheaper than the first one I bought because they've they mass produced them such volume. But, um, that has got me out of so much trouble so many times. Yeah, I've got a pedal board with a tuner on it. So there are times where you might be, say, doing doing an outdoor show and you can't have the pedal board or whatever. And uh, you may be using uh, batteries and your pedals and you still need to tune up and that has happened to me so many times I couldn't tell you where I've been in that situation and just before we start playing I can do a bit of a quick check with that so yeah absolute if, if I was to recommend one present out of everything here that would be the headstock tuner by Snark but there are other uh, 
there are other manufacturers of course but i think this is the most reasonably priced and uh, you know it, it's accurate I mean, i'm using this for when i'm recording so you know so much faith i've got in it so yes let's move on to these little beauties these are patch cables and these again if you're not sure what i'm talking about patch cable this is what you use to connect GFX pedals one to another very useful they do break they're under a lot of stress and strain these are mxr ones and they're the flat pancake type ones so you can squeeze more your pedals closer together with these it's not got such a big jack on it and that's a set of three there that's the most economical way of buying them you might as well go and you know whatever patch cable you're intending to purchase you might as well get a set and uh, you're always going to use those so put those up there um i'll just pick this up randomly it, it needs a wash but um it's basically a polishing cloth and it's specifically for guitars and it's very soft you can use it wipe down your strings get more life out your strings readily available not expensive but very useful if you've been playing whether you've been recording or rehearsing or, or a gig and you know you do tend to swear get a bit of sweat on the strings these are great after, after you give a bit of wipe down like that in your neck there and around here and you preserve so much of your guitar with just a simple cheap bit of gear little microfiber cloth for guitars like that i would get one that's specifically for guitars just to make sure like that is there's no rough edges and nothing on that so i'll put that up there in the uh, so opened present pile so to go with that i've got the dunlop 65 guitar polish now i've had this for years it lasts years this is a brilliant product i've used it i've used it on uh, all my guitars it, it i'm gonna give a little um, little sort of warning here um i have used it on my nitro moors finished nitro moors what am i saying my nitro finished uh, like gibsons very gently but um i double check just double check you know don't I'm not recommending you use it on a nitro finish but certainly i've done it and it hasn't nothing to one towards happened to me but uh, certainly for guitars like this uh, here you know your poly your normal poly finish guitars totally recommended last forever not expensive i've seen this in in included in sets with the like you know fretboard conditioner i'm not going to include fretboard conditioner or anything on this this now but uh, yeah, you can get like a full cleaning kit, but I, this product I found to be, you know, as I say, I'm not saying use it on nitro finished guitars, but other guitars other than nitro, it's been safe, and I have used it on nitro, and it's been okay, but I'm not recommending it for nitro, just so you know. But great product. There are other cleaners out there, but I found this Dunlop one. It's like a little spray inside there. I spray it onto the cloth, sometimes a guitar. It lasts forever. You don't need to use much really good product and well worth looking at as a stocking filler right the humble guitar strap my uh, sister-in-law rachel asked me what i wanted for christmas last year and in a completely unimaginative move <laughs> i did need i did need a new guitar strap and i thought well it you know it's, it's not going to break the bank that is it it's it, it's a it's a it's something I need that's, you know, if you shop around, again, shop around online. And this, I, I use almost, I use either Bernie Ball type, uh, the Ernie Ball type um, straps, or mostly I use these Fender straps and that, and you can go online and the various prices, but they're very affordable and they're very useful, very useful to have lying about. And they're padded and they last quite a long time. Um, the cost of some of the guitar straps now is insane absolutely insane but these you know i've seen these like well this is 2021 coming to christmas 
I've seen these like 11, 12, 15 quid in that area and uh, good present. Other straps again are available like the Ernie Ball ones but you know stocking filler wise we're talking you know not going crazy. Great Fender guitar straps. They even look good on Gibsons. <laughs> I use them on Gibsons. Right. Possibly one of the most important pieces of kit will be a guitar lead. Uh, the first thing to make sure is again if you're you don't know anything about guitar equipment you're buying for someone who's watching this. Um, Make sure it is a guitar lead, not a speaker lead. If you know you want a guitar lead, it's totally different from a speaker lead. There's a bazillion companies making them. Um, this one's a Roland one. I like these a lot. They last didn't they've lasted me forever. Um, totally recommend these. They don't tend to get too uh, messed up and curly in that. They, they, they retain the shape. There's loads though. They, these aren't the cheapest, but they're nowhere near the most expensive. But that's just the three meter one there, and they do the six meters. But again, it might be worth finding out um, who your intended target, what what length of uh, cable they want. Usually, for most players, it's either three meter, ten foot, or the six meter, twenty foot uh, length. I tend to run like for me, a six meter would. Uh, run from from the amp to the pedal board and then I'll try and get away with a shorter one at the other end if I can depends where I'm playing how big the stage is or whatever it is you know what I mean but, uh, certainly if you're just knocking around in a front room or a bedroom or whatever a three meter one is plenty enough and don't ignore that brands like stag the cheaper brands as well they, they do excellent cables and that Again, go online and search around. There's some excellent cables that, are, you know, some people might regard as budget, but they're perfectly fine. I mean, I've bought uh, unbranded cables from certain places that have lasted me years. Like, you know, so you don't have to go crazy. Certainly, you don't have to go in these sort of mental fifty quid plus kind of range for gold tip things. You know, you should be okay in a sort of. Uh, 15 to 30 range for a really decent cable that'll last for a long time the essential always essential have a spare one as well so into the pile onto the pile we go slides slides for guitar um this one's a glass one i've got a brass one over there i'll not bother showing you that look slides for playing the slady guitar um might be something to think about there to get someone. Um, this is a Dunlop one, the two one three, quite a big one. That's the ones I prefer. But you know, they're all they're all different sizes. But with this, something of this size will fit any finger. Like you know, but you're just starting out. They're not too heavy either. I think I'd recommend the glass one to start out on anyway. But so you can get them in steel and uh, brass and what have you. But, uh, yeah. Guitar slides, not expensive at all, around the sort of eight, nine, ten quid mark. And great, you just start learning to play slide guitar, you know, and explore another avenue with that. I'll put you up there. This is a bit of a random one. Um, these little dual screwdrivers, right? These are great for making adjustments because sometimes the pickups and your intonation areas I mean a lot of it is allen key but certainly if you're getting a scratch plate off or something like that, these little jeweler's screwdrivers are fantastic to getting into these tiny screws here or making adjustments to pick up heights and that uh, get a decent I think these might be Stanley or something like that yeah they're decent decent set again won't break the bank but they're very useful for the guitar player very very useful indeed and I've got, of course, around the house, doing jobs around the house. So we'll put you up there. Okay, we're coming to the end now. Um, I'll save that till last. Penultimate. We have a guitar stand. Again, I went years and years 
without having a guitar stand and I've no idea why you're just propping up in corners and that and you're asking for trouble it never inevitably happens um Hercules to me are the brand that most people know about in the guitar industry and reliable uh, their posher stands are really nice and I've got a couple of guitars on them here that they they're getting pricey now so we're getting like mid 30s 40 quid that sort of thing for that sort of stand but you know if if you want to buy just one stand assuming it's not like a, a flying v or whatever or a base where it's big um these bottom stands are absolutely excellent i should have picked one up in fact i am going to pick one up uh just to show what i'm talking about really because otherwise it's just waffle so I'll take that guitar there. I've got the dog down there still. I'll try not to knock him out. Oh, smash his foot. Hey, I mate. Sorry about that. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about with the. This is the standard, really industry standard Hercules. It just folds up. There's a little spring you pull out, and it'll just folds up like. So I usually just keep it like that. To, that will last forever but you'll have to pay you know i say probably around i haven't looked it up but i know it'll be around the 35 40 quid i'm not i'm sure well worth it if you can afford it but um i've got this one here to show you that uh, hercules do make a budget one they make a budget stand here this folds up flat um you could stick this in a gig bag you could stick this in um a decent sized pocket of a guitar carrying gig bag i reckon it's uh, very light as well it's got like a yeah little spring thing as a i think i i bought that this year i can't i can't remember what i paid for it i think it was something like about 14 15 quid it's in that range excellent present obviously let's have a look will it take so yeah much much you can see of that take an acoustic guitar as well as electric fantastic absolutely uh, wonderful that's a hercules um and most you know, get online search around everybody's sort of got these really so i'll put that down there i think so finally this is a little bit more expensive um it's a guitar pedal and for those of you dog hairs on it <laughs> those of you who don't know it's uh it's by a company called boss you may or may not have heard of them a japanese company the first company to really start mass producing pedals uh on a considerable volume and number hence they've been always been able to keep their prices down and that's why i've used this as an example this is my, uh, it, it's, I've done some vids on it, it's 40 year old Boss Super Overdrive, it, it still works. And they still make this, uh, and they're made in, this is a Japanese one, but they're made in Taiwan now. And you can see them around the 40, 45 quid mark, and if you go second hand, they're even cheaper than that. And they're really, really good overdrive pedals. It's the Boss Super Overdrive, the SD one. Uh, they brought out the 60th anniversary one as well, which is, they've, they've charged a bit more for that, but... Uh, you know, it's not the 60th anniversary, the 40th anniversary. What am I talking about? So that is a good, if, if you look, if, you know, if someone you know is looking for a, a guitar pedal, an overdrive pedal, you know, make a rocky, distorted kind of sound for them, I highly recommend that as a, a starting pedal, your first overdrive pedal, and it's affordable. So that concludes this little Christmas gift roundup. I know I've probably left out quite a few things here, but um, I just wanted to keep it, just keep it sensible and affordable, really. So the stock, as I say, the stocking fillers. Um, that just remains for me to say. Um, it's I recorded this at the end of November, so it's far too early to wish you a Merry Christmas, but. I'm going to wish you a Merry Christmas anyway, and uh, take, care, take care, guys, and I'll see you all later. Tati bye!